Good morning, YouTube. All right, everybody's been asking for more veggies, uh, more low carb options, and some healthier stuff all around. Man, am I about to hook you up. I have got the most amazing butternut squash done with a little bit of Parmesan and a little bit of ricotta roasted in the oven until it's super savory. Oh, I'm excited about this one. All right, let's cook y'all. We got a family to feed. Hey. <laughs> I have a butternut squash, okay? And all I did so far was peel it with a vegetable peeler. They're a little tricky, they're hard. It's hard to get the peel off, but well worth it. And then I'm just slicing it. Oh, you have to take all the schmudge out, you know, the pumpkin-y seed type situation that goes on inside a butternut. Get rid of that. And I'm slicing it, I don't know, how, how thick is that? Half inch. This is super simple. I um, discovered this. This is one of those things that you, you think, oh, that's gonna be pretty good. But then when you taste it, you're like, holy crap, it's the best thing I've ever had. <laughs> it was so different and delicious and fresh. Um, discovered this at my favorite little cafe I found, we found in Paris. And this place was just amazing. I found it by accident, just walking down the street. And here's a cafe that was absolutely jam-packed. And I thought, well, that's probably a good sign. And the food was spectacular. Just, I mean, I was trying to volunteer to go work for this guy for free. That's how good that was. All right, so I've got olive oil. And we're giving it a drizzle. Not tons. Just a little patience at this part. Love butternut squash, but you always see it in really sweet presentations. And what I loved about this was the savory. I mean, of course, the squash is sweet by itself. It caramelizes in the oven. And so you do have a sweet component, but that, that sweet of the squash, the natural sugars in the squash, balanced with these savory flavors to die for. Absolutely over the top, ridiculously good. All right, so I just use a little pastry brush just to dab the olive oil out. I probably use less than a tablespoon. It really doesn't take much. And I have my oven preheated to 400 degrees. This is just fresh black pepper. And this is sea salt. I wish I had kosher salt. My local grocery has been out of kosher salt. And my go-to when that happens is to order it from the giant people. You know, the smiley box folks. But kosher salt is an add-on item. Ugh. So I'm gonna have to wait until I go to Knoxville or Johnson City. Because that's a big fat pain in the butt. All right, so I've got um, kosher salt. The nice thing I will say about the sea salt is that you can see how much you've got on there. Like that. You want it to look like it's snowed. That's the right amount of salt. All right, now, you can use fresh garlic. The only problem with fresh garlic, because we're roasting at 400, your fresh garlic will probably burn by the time your squash gets cooked well enough. And burned garlic is not a thing of beauty. You don't want to do that to anybody. But I want the hint of garlic on there, so I'm just using garlic powder. Somebody was fussing the other day about garlic powder. Oh my God, you can't use garlic powder. Hush. Garlic powder is wonderful. Okay, so. Here we go into a 400 degree oven. We're gonna give it about 30 minutes. We're gonna test it. You want it to be tender enough to be pierced easily with a fork. And so at 30 minutes, we're gonna give it a poke. And if it's done, we're gonna pull it out. If it's not, we're gonna give it another 10 minutes because that's how we roll. All right, so our squash is almost ready. 30 minutes was pretty much perfect. I tested it just a second ago. So we're gonna get the next element ready, and this is the part that really just elevates the super simple um, butternut squash to something worthy of a Parisian cafe. I mean, seriously, no kidding. All right, so right here I have half a cup of ricotta cheese. And ricotta cheese by itself is got no flavor in my opinion. It's creamy, it's rich, but it really needs some help. All right, so I've got about two teaspoons of fresh thyme. 
And they didn't do this in Paris, but I like doing it, and I think it makes a big difference. So the, tea, the two teaspoons of fresh thyme goes right into the ricotta. And I'm going to give it half a teaspoon of coarse salt and just a little bit of fresh black pepper, okay? That we're just going to stir up and set aside. And over here, I have about a quarter cup. <laughs> let me go let my cat out. I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. I had a good deal with my cat. All right, what was I doing? Oh, quarter cup of Parmesan cheese. If you have great cheese, use it. Um, I don't. I have cheap cheese. I have shaker cheese. And we're just giving it enough olive oil. A tablespoon, maybe? That's going to take a little bit more. Just a loose paste. So we're just stirring that up just like that. You know what? I'm going to leave it with just that amount. You don't want it oily. Just enough to be kind of spreadable. And then our ricotta with the thyme salt and pepper, which is an amazing combination. All right, I need a spatula. So our spaghetti, not spaghetti squash, what is this stuff? Butternut squash came out of the oven and it is perfect. It is tender and golden and beautiful and hot. <laughs> Now the place we had it, um, they did um, like small plates, which was wonderful because we got to taste all kinds of stuff. Um, I loved that the portions were smaller. It just gives you reason to taste more, right? So that was perfect. All right, so here we go. Let me let you all see what I'm doing. So I've got our butternut just lined up on the plate and we're giving it just a little of the Parmesan and olive oil, which is just another savory, salty, nutty element over the top. And then over the top of that, we're spooning a little of our ricotta. Just like that. This makes me excited because it is stunning and it is beautiful and really different and a whole new way to love butternut squash and then just a little fresh thyme because I love that stuff. Fresh thyme is one of my favorite herbs. I think that the flavor complements so much and just a little really delivers. I don't usually mess with pulling it off the stems, but I did on that one. All right, guys. Da da! Tell me how gorgeous that is. It is beautiful. I need to take a picture of this one, so I don't want to mess it up. So I'm gonna give myself a taste over here. See how we did. Now my cat wants in, of course. Okay. Oh. All right, there we go, guys. A perfect, savory, sweet, little perfect bite, right? Ma'am. I nailed that one. Oh. You need to try this. I promise you'll love it. Mmm. Hey YouTube, thanks for watching. And if you thought that video was helpful, do me a huge favor. Hit like, hit subscribe, hit the little bell so you get a notification whenever I post a new video. And if you have a second, hop on over to Patreon and check out how to support my channel even more. Again, thanks for watching.